Happy autumn, my fellow Skyrim modding addicted people, and welcome to another episode of Mods of the Moment. Today's episode is an extra long one, as we'll take a look at amazing new immersion, gameplay and even quest mods among others, but I have also sprinkled in a couple of spine-chilling mods to celebrate the spooky season that is upon us. I'm Raina, the Bard's College graduate, and now let's check out the first mod on the list. Imperial Castles of Skyrim Forts Revamped is a new mod that redesigns the forts, towers and castle ruins in the game, inspired by Castle Bruma and the like. It immensely improves the look, feeling and defenses of the forts by adding some much needed parapets, battlements and machiculations. This mod is highly compatible and performance friendly, ensuring a smooth experience and making it simply a top tier mod to have in your load order if you're a fan of the look of this fort redesign, and I sure am, for instance. JK has released a new location overhaul, this time upgrading the Nightingale Hall, the home of the Master Thieves in the service of Nocturnal, the Daedric Prince of Darkness. In vanilla, this space is nothing to brag about, but with JK's Nightingale Hall, it's transformed to a place you can actually call home as a Nightingale thief. The main hall feels cozy now with the shared dinner table and fireplace chairs, and the bedroom has been revamped completely to make it the ultimate dwelling for the Dragonborn Nightingale. Stylized crafting stations have been added to make visiting the place more convenient and useful. The subtle details everywhere around the hall are the icing on the cake and make the location feel more lived in and alluring. Edmond's Cinematic Dragon Soul Absorption Remastered is a glorious title for a glorious mod. This mod makes harvesting dragon souls a lot more epic with new music and animations that you can customize to your liking from the foe mod installer. After slaying a fearsome dragon, your character will perform an animation that leads to a soul explosion effect and it makes playing the legendary dragonborn feel even more legendary. It's been a while since I have showcased a custom follower, so let's check out Joe Bargo, the maestro, fully voiced companion. This follower is a Kajid conjuration master, a true artist of necromancy. His parents were Kajid caravan traders, so he grew up in a moving environment, playing with puppet dolls and training archery. One night, the caravans were destroyed by fire and killed Jobargo's parents, even though he tried to save them, resulting in him turning to necromancy. The dead are my closest companions. They don't argue, they don't betray, and they always do as I ask. He is very intelligent, philosophical and true to himself, but also displays lighter moments of humor and warmth from time to time. He refuses to use any other weapon than his bound bow, and when needed, summons a puppet skeleton to help him in combat. And the true artist never reveals their secrets, only the results. The mod also comes with a fully functional player home that you can find at Hunter's Rest under the trapdoor, and this is where you can find your bargo to begin with. It's guarded by his necromancer apprentices, so tread carefully. This is a great follower mod for those who are in need of an equal and competent companion to accompany their travels. The fire scarred me, blinded my right eye, and left me this face. Now, let's check out Dynamic Female Swimming Idols. This is another masterful animation mod from one of my favorite modders, this time overhauling the swimming idols in the game with the help of Open Animation Replacer. If your character is wearing heavy armor, she will have serious trouble staying afloat, and if she's wearing light armor or clothes, it'll be much easier, and she might even do a neat little somersault. Swimming in this game isn't really an interesting gameplay feature, but this mod makes it a tad better with these smooth animations. Subtleties of Skyrim adds three immersive effects to the beautiful landscape of Solstheim. The first feature is that you can now see molten lava dripping down the red mountain in Vardenfell, making it look even more perilous and epic. 
There's also giant mushrooms added to the island, which is a classic characteristic of Vardenfell. On top of these details, the mod adds some animated ships in the distance of Sea of Ghosts, sailing out and about the horizon. Remember that orc that you can come across, who wants a noble death promised by the Daedric Prince Malagath? A good death, old orc overhaul overhauls this random encounter by revamping his dialogue to further explain his motivations for the death that he's asking from you. Our souls must be cast into the forge itself. There they are judged on the hatred and fury that resides within. There is no place for gentle beings in that land, and so we must fight till the very end. You do not understand my plight. This journey is an ancient one. I have chased death many times, each time certain it would claim me. Yet here I stand. The writing is gold, and he has been brought to life with incredible voice acting work. He's also wearing a unique new armor, pig iron set, and his stats have been tweaked to make him a tougher opponent in the battle to come. After the fight, you can take use of his Orsimer themed heavy armor set that comes with a theme appropriate mason shield resembling a samurai. Now, a mod that makes this bard very happy. Singalongs of Skyrim. This mod adds new dialogue to the bards sure. in Skyrim, so you can ask them to sing songs that the NPCs can sing along with. Nothing better than the whole inn singing some of these iconic tunes, don't you think? I tell you, I tell you, the dragonborn comes. There are also completely new songs included in this mod, instrumentals and songs with vocals, completely new scenes and a poem that the bards can recite. Those we made in the Hadley Shire You're the one I truly desire Gather round, let me tell you a tale One that will make you blush, no doubt but arguably, the most important feature is that now you can listen to my favorite bard, Lurbuk, sing. In the mood to sing! <laughs> to try, for all could see what was to be the signs are in the sky. To add a bit of flair to the Blue Palace in solitude, let's check out Skyfall's Blue Palace Courtyard. This garden entrance to the palace gets overhauled with a grand staircase fitting for the royalty, making the building feel more elevated and important. Now, it also matches the interior of Blue Palace, which I can't unsee now. The courtyard is now a perfect place to enjoy another beautiful day in solitude. House Carls, those elusive NPCs, just appear into the world after you have been anointed Thane. With House Carls pre Thaneship, they actually live a life of their own, separate from their only purpose of guarding your back. Now you can bump into them in the cities, maybe in the tavern having a drink, or on their way on some errands, as they're people like any other. This mod is something I didn't know I needed, but now that I have it, it just makes complete sense. Housecarls aren't quite as high in the hierarchy as the stewards, and with JS badges of office, this becomes very clear. This mod gives Skyrim stewards their own shiny badges of office, fancy golden pins that represent their power in the court, inspired by Game of Thrones and House of the Dragon. Now, it is impossible to mistake a steward for another commoner roaming around the town. Peasant Dreams, a common bed replacer, is another genius of a mod from an incredible modder, replacing the peasant bed with a beautiful new 3D model. Now, even these common beds look super inviting and cozy, perfect to fall asleep on when spending the night in the nearest inn. The mod also has a lot of optional files, so you can customize the beds to your liking. Now, let's have a break from this rather fast-paced showcasing and check out Dragonia, a huge mountain estate player home. 
This mansion is only worthy for the legendary Dragonborn, located within the foothills of the throat of the world, near the town of Iverstead. To access Dragonia, you'll receive a letter from the courier that gives you the instruction to find the key to the house. Needless to even mention, this player home is enormous and comes with everything you could ever need from the crafting stations to multiple rooms for your spouse, children and as many as 8 followers. There is even another building on the property that houses the estate staff and 4 additional companions with themed rooms, as if there is not enough space already. <laughs> The main room upstairs is completely dedicated for you, with atmospheric areas to relax and study in. The armory has its own entrance, and these halls make displaying your collection easy and epic at the same time. You can also sneak your way into the dungeons, where the extensive range of Daedric Prince shrines are located, that'll buff you with various powers. Even if you don't have any followers, you don't have to be completely alone in this huge mansion, as there are multiple NPCs to keep you company and sell their wares, and even a bard to fill the halls with music. On Lordas and Sandas, you can enjoy your free time with them in the grotto that is located underground and is the perfect place to relax for a while. This mansion is truly a worthy dwelling for the Dragonborn. A Shrine of Azura at the Shrine of Azura is quite self-explanatory, but let's check it out regardless. This mod adds an actual Shrine of Azura at the huge Azura statue in Winterhold that buffs you with a 10% resistance of magic. I heard you like Azura, so I put a little Azura at your Azura. Ivy. Riverwood Windmill Apothecary is a mod that adds a new building in the town of Riverwood, a charming little alchemy shop in the form of a windmill. An alchemist woman called Ivy lives here and sells her potions and ingredients, and you can sneak in to explore her living quarters upstairs. It's a very cozy little place and fits in Riverwood like glove. Many patches are baked in with this mod, so it's very convenient to install, even if you have existing mods that affect this area. If you're looking for a small adventure, you might be interested in the Thracian Scare, a short quest mod. There has been sightings of Slodes on an island, those dangerous necromancer slugmen who are hated and feared for releasing the Thracian Plague in the First Era. To start the quest, we must first visit the Winking Skiver, where we'll meet a Red Guard Corsair, Talik. That's great to hear. You look to be very capable. I will be at my ship near the Solitude Lighthouse. He'll soon be on his way to thwart this threat, and you can join him and his crew to the island, where the Slodes are performing some sort of ritual. It's time to get on the bottom of this. I found this quest mod really unique and interesting, as I don't think there are many if any existing mods concerning the Slodes. If you're looking to add a Nordic touch to the game, you might be interested in Stave Church 2024. This is a new version of the mod Stave Church of Skyrim, adding 4 new optional locations of Old Norse worship in the game. These new churches are larger than the earlier ones, and they have interior cells with NPCs worshipping the Old Norse gods. I find these dave churches very atmospheric and very beautiful, and they make the landscape of Skyrim more interesting with their presence. To liven up the environment even more, let's check out Suijin's Gardens. This mod adds 9 new landmarks to the game, these beautiful, peaceful gardens. They are each located near the major cities of Skyrim, so you can enjoy your bath with an absolutely fantastic view. There isn't any gameplay elements to the gardens, they're just designed for the purpose to take in a moment to relax and breathe the fresh air. A Dizzying Fall quest mod is another small quest mod or maybe more like an extra encounter in the wild that adds a bit more of Khajiit lore in the game. Near the Shrine of Azura, you'll find an injured Khajiit person visibly in distress, and by talking to him, you can learn his story on how he ended up here. 
The voice acting is by Rob Bobert, the amazing Cash It Will Follow author, so quality is guaranteed. Ah, so this one shall not die alone. Toro is pleased. Ah, no beast or brigand did this. It is of Toro's own doing. Now, let's check out just a couple of incredible new armor and clothing mods, beginning with Knight Errant Armor Set, which is a perfect heavy armor for a mysterious wandering knight. This is an unisex heavy armor set that consists of six pieces, including a satchel and a shoulder cape. The outfit comes with physics, so remember to have your faster HTT SMP installed for this mod to work correctly. If you're not a brutal warrior, but rather an introspective monk, you might rather enjoy wind color, mage robes and staff. This mod adds this simple clothing set into the game, as well as this staff, that sends your enemies flying with a hurricane force gust. There are four color options available to try out, and there's also a patch to have your greybeards use these robes. I think these robes look awesome for any mage or traveler. Before moving on, let's also check out Mage Clothing Expansion. This mod adds new lore-friendly mage robes to the game that add a bit of variety to these garments. These clothes are composed of the existing vanilla assets, so they look and feel very faithful to the original, but now with a lot more to choose from. There are patches for making these outfits less skimpy and more modest, and the option to have the Winterhold College NPCs to wear these outfits. Now, it is finally the time to check out some spooky mods in honor of the Halloween season that is upon us. Let's begin with a couple of NPC overhauls and work our way to something even creepier and creepier. Harkon and Valerica Refined is yet another overhaul of these important Dawnguard characters, making them look charismatic and enigmatic, really just perfect fit for this vampiric couple. I really like the look of Harkon's long hair, he looks like he belongs to a metal band now, and now that I said that, Valerica should join one as well. Panderable has come out with another amazing NPC overhaul, this time making the unnamed enemy witches and hags look incredible. It's always a jarring difference when you're so used to named NPCs having their faces overhauled and then stumbling upon these vanilla enemies. Thanks to this mod, a portion of them are now fixed, to the lack of better word. These witches look awesome obviously they are beautiful but also rugged dangerous and unique looking calling all necromancers for this mod should be right up your alley grave digging necromancy add-on adds the option to dig up graves and loot items from them and then use the said items in necromantic practices uh <laughs> so yeah so what you need is a shovel so you can dig up a grave in the first place Ah, this feels wrong. Robbing a grave is obviously a crime, so you should be wary of when you choose to do this and stay alert for any people around if you don't want to get in trouble. You can dig up different things that tell a story about the buried person, as well as some alchemical properties that can be crafted into useful potions for a necromancer. And finally, we have the Dreskathar Horror. This is a mod that adds multiple new world spaces along with quests to complete, all within this spooky environment and eerie atmosphere. For centuries, every 10 years, ships have gone missing in the Azorian Sea, never to be seen again. The quest starts off with a courier delivering you a letter, a job offer, to investigate the disappearances. You'll first travel to High Rock, in a silent and rainy town of Belmore, where the guards are eager to see you leave it as soon as possible. By the docks, we'll meet the captain, Silm Noor, who tells us that the people haven't been able to get any sleep since the Dremora appeared in the town. Why does everyone look like death? No one in town has been able to sleep since the thing in black armor arrived. We have been awake for almost an entire week now. 
As we agree to sail to the Azurian Sea, a storm catches our fleet and we wake up alone in a Dremer lighthouse. All around us, we can see all the ships that have wrecked here by the island in the centuries past, and now our only goal is to survive and find our way back to Skyrim. The map of the island is huge, and there are a lot of things to discover and some side quests to do as well that help you understand the nature of this land, the story in its entirety, and the fates of the people lost here. It is a very intriguing, albeit isolated, experience, and the environmental storytelling and design of the island of Drestakar is done well. I recommend you take some time to play it, as you can spend hours playing this quest mode to discover everything it has to offer. If you want to support the channel, watch extra content, and gain access to Discord, check out patreon.com slash bardcollegegraduate. My thanks to Alexandru, Billy Duncan, Dode Punker, Jacob, Kira, Red, Ryan Ulrich, and the Panicked Monk, as well as my other Patreon supporters whom I appreciate the most. Thank you so much for watching the video. Take care and see ya!